So this week we are going to be building a automatic door with the kids. We're going to be following one of the classroom projects. So if you start up your WeDo software and press the classroom projects, and now press the light bulb up at the top, scroll down you'll see there's one named Flex, it's number six. This is the instructions for what we're looking to build. Kids should be familiar with the instructions by now. Start building and they can follow step by step. This is kind of neat because it offers them their first look at gearing. And they're going to use the motor to turn one direction of movement into another with gears. So, taking a quick look. What's in here? We have a gear that's going to be spinning transferring its motion 90 degrees to another gear and that's going to be attached to this friction pin which is going to allow our door to open and close. The modification that the kids are going to want to make to the basic flex model is also found under classroom projects. Light bulb number 6A. It's called floodgate and just shows them how they might want to be able to create a little door to attach to it. You see I have a little door here and I added a stopper so the door can't swing past a certain point. Going to be a little more helpful. So let's get this programmed. Start a new program, turn on your brick, pair it, the basic instructions that the kids are going to be working with is to have this look like the door at the grocery store. All right. In that case, we want to just think about the actions that our door should be taking. First off, we want it to open, and that's going to last about a second. We don't have to be as precise with our timing here because this friction joint will actually slip so we don't have an issue with the motor trying to um, actually break our model apart. After that, we want to stop the motor. Most doors will stay open for a few seconds. So this is a point where we're going to tell our program to just go ahead and wait. That door's open, now let's leave it open. Let's choose four seconds for that amount of time. Now we want the door to close. So we choose movement in the opposite direction for one second. Then we stop the motor. If we've done it right, we should have our door opening and then closing. Let's give it a test. All right, so the door is opened up. We're waiting our four seconds. The door closes. And again, the stops on each side help so that this just turns and the motor spins a bit without damaging anything, um, and we don't need to be very precise with our timing. Much less frustrating than trying to time the string with the crane. So, what else can we do with this? Um, the grocery store actually waits until it sees a person before opening the door. You don't have somebody actually pressing a button. So we can use our motion sensor. Our motion sensor is going to act as our eyes. If we plug that in and add it to our brick, again, you should see it pop up in port view down below, and there it is registering 10, and if we come closer to it, you see that number changes, so motion sensor is working as we expected. So what do we need to do to change our program? In this case, the kids should pre be pr uh, familiar with this already from the spy bot, but we want to wait until the motion sensor sees something. So we go back to one of those wait blocks, and this time, instead of a time, we're going to be waiting until motion is sensed. So if we hit play, the model will wait until someone shows up. 
the door opens, they come through, and the door closes. Now, what happens when the next person shows up? Hmm, nothing. So we'd have to play our program again. Most students will immediately say, well, I'd like it to loop. So why not? Let's take our loop block and put it around this. If you're unfamiliar with loops, it's just instructing our program to go back to the beginning and start again. We can have it loop infinitely if we don't put anything here, or we can have it loop a given number of times or uh, whatever set conditions we, we want to um, add here, but we want this door to open for every person that comes by, so let's try it. Okay, it's waiting for someone to show up. Person comes in, walks through, the door closes. It's sitting here waiting for the next person to come by. We don't have to press the button again. Instead, the next person walks by, door opens, and we're done. Kids may want to get a little more creative here. Maybe they want to have the door stay open as long as somebody's there, uh, plus a few more seconds. You know, there's all different ways to extend this. But in its most basic form, this should be kind of what they're working towards. Um, but there's lots of different ways to get here. Um, challenge them to try to think about loops and the motion sensor if they've made it to the end of the build.